If there was one motorcycle that I wish I purchased brand new with all the bells and whistles, that would be the 2006 and up VFR 800 Interceptor by Honda. The masterpiece in sport touring with all the luggage and every amenity available on the bike at that time. Stay tuned for a complete, conclusive, in-depth review of this amazing motorcycle, which so happens to be my favorite bike of all time. Zdravo i dobrodošli, bon dia, ben bindus, servus, vilkom, buenos dias, bienvenidos, greetings riders and welcome to another sport tour review. Pegasus Motorcycle Tours and Consulting, yours truly, Nick here. Thank you for your time, thank you for your attention. This review is meant to be an honest, complete, conclusive review of one of the best motorcycles uh, ever made, I think, especially in this sport touring class with the single-sided swing arm, the full f luggage, and uh, as you know, I reviewed nearly every motorcycle produced as a competitor to the VFR 800, including the Futura by Aprilia, the Sprint ST, and uh, Ducati ST4. So these are motorcycles that feature great looks, great sport capabilities, and luggage for that touring two up long distance touring. Also on that list is the undeniable K1200S by BMW. Also one of, one of the motorcycles that really left a mark on me. I had a yellow and black one and I loved that bike. However, I don't place it quite in this same class because it's a 1200 cc engine and it doesn't really have the matching luggage or the top case. And for me, that's kind of the, the selling point of these motorcycles. Now, one thing I did not expect to see on YouTube, for example, all the reviews of this bike really omit the luggage. And to me, that's kind of amazing because the luggage is one of the four factors that attracted me to this motorcycle. Not only the luggage, but it's a matching colored luggage that's spacious, that's really well thought through. So in this review, you're going to get everything I think about the luggage because you know I can I'm kind of a, a stifler when it comes to good luggage on a bike so for me this is key so I said one of the four factors the other three being well the looks the looks are subjective but to me this is still a timelessly beautiful motorcycle uh, much much better looking than the predecessor the fifth generation VFR but uh, not super futuristic and angular. Everything is there. I like looking at it still to this day. So looks are subjective, but I think objectively speaking, this is an incredibly beautiful motorcycle, especially in this beautiful pearl white paint. And we'll talk more about the paint itself. So that's factor number two. Factor number three is the fact that this motorcycle has been honed by uh, Honda since the 80s, uh, the, the first one being produced in 1986. I was born in 87 when the best version of this bike arguably was built, the RC30, the race motorcycle with the two beautiful uh, beams up front. You know, at the time it cost 15K, that in, in today's money that's $40,000. That's a pure race machine. So the race history that's incorporated into the development of this bike is really impressive. I'm not gonna talk too much about the history because we'd be here forever. If you wanna get the history, there are uh, individuals on YouTube who do that, you know, include all the history of the VFR line. And I will link that in the description of this video so you can, you can run through it. I'm going to specifically talk about the sixth generation VFR produced 2002 to 2013 in, in specific markets, not in every market. So more or less looks like this, so it's very recognizable. And then the fourth factor being the VTEC. I freaking love the VTEC. I love the VTEC. The VTEC is the reason why I don't want to switch to the 1200. The 1200 being the, the newest version of the motorcycle, the largest displacement. They got rid of the VTEC. This was the only generation that had the VTEC. I'll talk to you about it, why I love it so much. So let's begin with that fourth factor, the V4 VTEC engine of the sixth generation. So Honda started developing the V4 back in the, the early 80s. Uh, we're only going to be talking about the Interceptor. Before that, it was in the Sabre. Uh, also a pretty cool looking bike. You know, the V45, uh, the V75, I believe. So it was a 1,000cc engine. Really cool motorcycle with matching luggage as well, but not really reminiscent of this bike. Uh, the Sabre also was a, a, a cruiser motorcycle called the Magna later. In the Interceptor line that was started in 1985, 86, 
the the V motor was uh, used and it actually gained quite a prominence in the racing world. Uh, again, I don't want to touch too much on the history, but I'll just uh, tell you that one of the best motorcycles in Honda's line that was produced in 1987, RC30, the VFR 750. Now in the first production year of this motorcycle, 1986, the generation one, the VTEC had something different and that was a gear driven cam. So the gear driven cams were what actually made this motorcycle unique and very much over engineered by Honda. Uh, I actually happened to run into a local rider who bought that bike new, 1986. I was born in 87, pretty impressive. Has a hundred plus K thousand miles, pearl white, not white, pearl white, mind you, beautiful bike. And those were basically famous for the engine and for the gear driven cam. So it's kind of neat. And there's actually, you know, a, a sticker here that, that shows you that that was the selling point. That was what everybody was after. It had a cool sound and it was built to last. So like I said, the local guy who bought it new, 150 plus miles, no problem, everyday rider. I don't know if he'd take it around the country like I did on my VFR. But, and speaking of, this is my third sixth generation VFR. I actually moved from Michigan to California on my red 2003 model. And uh, I find that bike to be super comfortable for, you know, transcontinental touring. And I, I enjoyed every minute of it and, and the bike was perfect, especially as much in the straightaways of, you know, Nebraska, Iowa, Ohio, Indiana, until you hit the Rockies as in the Rockies and in the curves that we have here uh, in California as well. And the bike just puts a smile on your face because it has everything. It, it does everything well in that regard. And I actually moved, so I had a, I didn't have the proper luggage on the bike at the time. And here we have some. Other Honda enthusiasts, love it. So I did not have the proper luggage, the, the OEM luggage at the time but I was able to fit everything I needed for moving my life from another state across the country to beautiful sunny California where I have been thankful and blessed every day to enjoy the weather, to enjoy these amazing curves as you can see the rides. Uh, what that bike is doing is uh, just gorgeous how that, that Honda is kissing, that's a CBR, how it's kissing the corners here. So anyways, moved on the bike. When I came here, I bought another one, and I, uh, the reason why I bought that one is just because it had the upgraded seven-spoke wheel that was present from the 1990 Generation 3 VFR, and that spoke wheel bolts directly to this one, and it, to, to, to this basically spoke here, to this, to this hub, and uh, it just looks better. You know, seven-spoke, nothing crazy, but it does look better than this five, in my opinion. A lot of people tend to agree. So. That bike was just amazing. Another beautiful red, blood red Honda. And I loved every day that I owned that motorcycle. The only reason why I ended up selling it is at the time I was uh, in front of a motorcycle gear store and had my bike parked there. And some guy came and says like, wow, that's a gorgeous bike. Would you sell it? I'm like, yeah, sure. What's, you know, everything's for sale for the right price. He didn't even have a license. So I sat him on the back of the bike. The VFR kicked in. We, we took a wheelie down, down a side street that was not intentional. And he wasn't scared of it. So he actually ended up buying it after he got the license. I took it to his home and he's been happy ever since. I, I always keep in touch with the people I sell my bikes to. I do wish I kind of kept the, the wheel because the wheel is very difficult to find. What's also very popular is with the white one that's uh, from 2006 and on. Uh, the wheels can be white in certain markets, etc. There's a black stripe here in the very last year that was made. A lot of different color combos. They're all beautiful. It's a very, very well built machine. Now the VFR is called the Interceptor. The new VFR 800, the newest one, is just called the Interceptor. So what does the VFR stand for? V for the engine design, F for the four, V4, and R, the racing, the racing heritage of the motorcycle. And as I mentioned, the RC30, uh, the, the, the most exceptional, I think, of the Interceptor line, that was the VFR 750, and only 3,000 were in, in, you know, in, uh, imported in the US. Beautiful tricolore, tricolored tri uh, Honda, you know, the blue, red, the dark blue, the red, and the white, just gorgeous, gorgeous motorcycle with the, with the headlights, the, the dual round headlights in the front, which in fact, this one has actually incorporated. You see the dual headlights are round, 
Uh, and I love how this plastic piece kind of hugs from underneath as well. And at night, you, you, you still get that uh, traditional dual headlight look that, for example, the Triumphs are known for, the, the Speed Triple, etc. And uh, I love that. You get uh, two additional high beam headlights up top, so you have four bulbs running if you want to. Pretty, pretty great lighting on this motorcycle overall. And I exception, uh, especially like the, the tail light hidden underneath here between the dual triangular exhaust that has two exits on each uh, side. Uh, it just looks cool. It sounds amazing. It's out of the way and uh, I wouldn't change it. I love the fact that you don't really hear too much of it because this is ultimately a, a tour, long distance sport tour. You don't want to be listening to, you know, your brain doesn't want to be buzzing all day long from, from the loud exhaust, but when that VTEC opens up and you hear what that engine can sound, it's just, it's just uh, beautiful. So the VTEC stands for Variable Valve Timing and Lift Electronic Control System, something to that effect. And uh, it, it provides best of both worlds. You get the high-end output and the low-end torque. Like I said, super, super satisfactory engine. The whole point of the VTEC from Honda, which is the same ones used in you know, Honda Cores, etc., is to give you best of both worlds, that low torque, a low RPM, as well as the high power uh, that you need, uh, that you get with most sport tours that don't have that kind of engine. Of course, the V-twin engine is known for the low-end torque, and you know a triple like in the Sprint ST is is also known to have kind of a, a more of a band of power, and I like that. But what I especially admire about the VTEC is that at 6.4 thousand rpm on this version 6.8 on previous versions before 2006 that uh, two valves per cylinder extra open up so every cylinder has four valves but only two operate normal uh, normal during normal procedure everything under that threshold of 6.4 and then at 6.4 rpm you get the beautiful sound you get the beautiful pull that's not too abrupt in the in the newer generation of the sixth and here's, here's the guy again, we gotta, I, gotta, I just love the sound of the Honda pulling through the corners. <clears throat> so at 6.4 on the second version of the sixth generation, so 2006 and up, where the band was lowered from 6.8 thousand rpm to 6.4 where the VTEC engages you get uh, two more valves per cylinder open up and you get this incredible sound it's just gorgeous gorgeous sound of the engine breathing better uh, and of course you get extra power and, and everything is is felt you know from from the, the minute vibrations through your whole body uh, just again the sound is, is exceptionally beautiful coming from this triangular two-piece exhaust that's been routed from underneath the seat so that you have this full visibility of the single-sided swing arm single-sided swing arm itself uh, an awesome thing just to be able to work on the we on the on the on the chain on the tire four bolts and the thing is out in in 30 seconds and uh, that was developed actually th through cooperation with elf a racing uh, conglomerate basically to create something for race bikes to to be able to faster remove the wheel replace the tire replace the wheel at pit stops so I, I appreciate that very much and obviously it just looks better period that's I think undeniable it just looks better to, to to see something like the this side of the motorcycle exposed what the next generation of the VFR 800 interceptor did is uh, so the basically yeah the following generations uh, they they incorporated this gorgeous gorgeous wheel very elaborate wheel and then they hide it with typically an ugly big shiny muffler you know so I don't get the point of that I love the fact that the exhaust has been routed under the seat people complain which boggles the mind that uh, you lose storage space but come on you have so much storage in the bags in the top case in the tank bag of course tank bag is, is, is aftermarket it doesn't belong through Honda line but the whole purpose of this motorcycle is the availability of genuine OEM paint matched luggage that's very functional 
especially on the sixth generation. I say especially on the sixth generation because even on the 1200, the size of the panniers has been reduced, so you cannot fit a helmet in there, which really makes you think, why would they do that? I mean, they do that so that the passenger foot can fit, so there's a, a little bit of a curve in there, but it's unfortunate. But let's leave that conversation about luggage for later. You know, I can talk about luggage all day long. Uh, it's just, it adds so much to the utility of this motorcycle. So, the engine, yeah, liquid cooled, obviously. Radiators were mounted on the side. Uh, you, you, it, it just, it breathes well, it looks well that way. You do get a little bit of a heat on the right side here just due to the exhaust being routed this way. So I actually do feel it. I feel it more on the 1200 version. I mean, my foot sweats on that one. This one is manageable, but uh, I, the, the, bike, the bike breathes really, really well. So, so much for the engine. Six-speed gearbox shifts like it should. There's no issues there. I hit about 5,000 RPM at 75 miles an hour, which is pleasant. Now, 800 cc's for a bike that's sitting at 535 or so pounds is sufficient anything below would be insufficient so that's why they you know honda developed a bike with more cc's it's actually 781 47 or so cubic inches uh, but before they you know they were 750 so in japan there was even a vfr 400 created so that's kind of interesting never sold in the u.s but the 800 cc engine is sufficient for everyday use you're not getting yourself in trouble uh, with the cops you know running running faster than you should more often than you should but uh, the power is there when you need it you, you you just climb up you often you don't even need to shift down you just climb up to 6.4 thousand rpm on this version and you get that extra extra power extra boost so to speak and it sounds great it's there when you need it and i find myself shifting between six and six and a half anyways uh, naturally where i'm not pushing the bike where i'm just commuting so for me this has been a perfect commuter every day to the office 65 miles about 100 kilometers and it's just been great because i can come to the office leave everything in the luggage my chaps and cold weather my my back protector all fits neatly in the top case the helmet the gloves everything else the lunch on the other side and i can walk into the office looking like a gentleman no i'm just kidding i love the fact that i can wear you know chaps and leather boots and, and not feel weird in today's day but we are in california that's that's where this stuff uh is at home so anyways um yeah, so the engine itself is just phenomenal. It, it gives you everything you need, nothing that you don't. And, and I really love that about that. It's obviously, uh, Honda has made this bike last for so long just because it has a reputation of, of bulletproof reliability. It's very easy to work on, the oil changes, all that is, is super easy on it. it it's a really, really well-built machine. So, so much of, about the engine itself. Again, on the previous version, the v, uh, VTEC would hit a little bit higher, 6.8, and people complained, some people complained that it was too abrupt, on and off. On this version, that has been refined a little bit. And I, I, I don't notice, I never had a complaint even on the previous version, and I had two of them, 2003 models. And uh, uh, another change that uh, Honda made was on, the, on this later half, 2006 and up, they also uh, made the VFR, the four cylinders opened uh, if you let go of the throttle and the past 6.4 thousand rpm where the vfr was actuated uh, it would it would still be actuated until in the five thousands rpm i don't know exactly what five thousand something but uh, so it would be less abrupt on and off if that makes any sense uh, now you might think how does it perform in the corners it performs fine if you're hugging this corner and you climb to that rpm threshold yeah, it, it's not so abrupt that it would it would uh, be alarming or, or disconcerting to you. It would, it, it's fine. It's completely manageable. It's tuned. It's not a problem. Uh, it, it might seem like an interesting thing to consider, and, and, and it is. But there's no issues when you are hugging a corner and you actually, probably inadvertently, let's say, actuate uh, that threshold uh, for the VTEC to come into play. It's it's not a problem. I love it. And again. I had a chance to own probably the only white uh, 1200 sold in the US with white wheels and, and color match luggage, including the top case. And I just didn't like the engine. The engine was like every other 1200 engine that I tried. Super powerful, you know, 170 horsepower, incredibly powerful engine. But to be very honest, also heavier bike, uh, this motorcycle does not 
stay too far behind that bike at all, you know, and, and you get that power without having to wind up to, you know, red line. So uh, speaking of red line, yeah, what is it? Almost 12,000 RPM, just below 12,000 RPM is where the red line comes in. So there's been a few changes with the 2006 and up model, mostly, I like it when I say VTEC, but also uh, aesthetically, these, these little lights up front and, and in the rear have been changed to basically smoke color instead of orange as they were before. Some other smaller changes as well, but the beautiful white one came out that year and, and that's where I was looking for for the longest time. I think it's just so catchy. You probably don't get to appreciate, of course you don't, over a camera, especially white just kind of washes it out. Um, I'm in the shade, the sun's behind me, but what can you do? But uh, it's just an incredibly gorgeous color. And the fact that they had it since 86, the pearl white, is just so beautiful. You know, it's just incredible. Here's the close-up of the bike. You actually get to appreciate more of it in the shadow because uh, the white in the sunlight overpowers the camera's ability to white balance. So from the front, you can see the headlights, the round headlights, and I really like this look. I don't particularly care about the front end of the motorcycle. I think it's the part of the bike that I dislike the most looks wise, but I do appreciate how these kind of tend to go underneath and the round headlights. These are the, the low beams. These are the high beams and they look awesome during, during use. It's just, uh, especially at night where you can only see the, those kind of lights, just gorgeous. So another less known benefit of the V4 version of an engine is that it eliminates the need typically of a counterbalance shaft because you have opposing pistons that uh, hit at a different time. Uh, I think two of them hit at 180 degrees and the other two hit uh, at different times. So that, um, that gives the VFR that uh, amazing sound. But what that does is also, again, eliminates the need of a counterbalance shaft. But um, crucially, uh, which was something that the 1200 version uh, took advantage of is it enables you to make the engine such that two pistons uh, that are uh, on the inside are close together and two pistons that are outside are the ones that uh, enable the possibility of narrowing the sleek slender profile of the bike when seen from the front. So if you have let's say you have two in the front that are on the outside and two that are on the interior towards the rear of the bike, that'll make the engine come uh, more towards the middle, the seat part. So it'll, it'll be, be a, a narrower seating position for the rider. So that's also very, very interesting. So a lot of the original diehard owners of the Interceptor were really disappointed when Honda decided to get rid of the gear-driven cam and replace it with the chain-driven cam. It changed uh, the, the sound of the system and the feeling of the system and it's said that the uh, gear driven cam is more reliable and part of the reason for that probably was either a combination maybe of uh, trying to uh, comply with noise ordinances in, in, in effect in Europe mostly uh, but also to keep the cost down it's, it's a more complex system more robust system the, the gear driven cam More Hondas, those are the V, the, what is it, the NC, 700 and 750. Another bike that I reviewed, I've actually taken my NC down to Baja, California to see Gene off. You all know Gene, he bought my Suzuki DR650. I think he's in Chile now. So take a look, at, if you're in, into another co great commuter that gets like 65 miles a gallon, uh, especially today with $7 a gallon gas we have here in California, then look, take a look at the Honda NC 700. Uh, or 750 great great motorcycles that also come with the dual clutch system so the automatic transmission version of it if y'all know gene by now uh, he makes a debut in nearly every of my videos you can follow him on the korean cowboy on instagram to see where his odyssey has taken him and uh, i said goodbye to him when he finally took off in baja mexico that's where we parted ways so great great bike another great commuter uh, not the same class because nowhere near as powerful even it's a 700 uh, and nowhere near as sporty as this motorcycle so much for the engine the transmission the other beauty about this motorcycle the brakes the brakes on the honda are a linked braking system the linked braking system is basically the following you have two 
calipers in the front. The rotors are at 295 and I think a 265 in the rear. And each caliper has three pistons. In the rear, there are also three pistons. So what happens when you actuate either front or rear, they're linked, you cannot work them independently, is that two of these pistons on each, on each, uh, so four total in the front. Four pistons are actuated in the front and there is a mechanical motion of the caliper pushing forward, activating a lever, a piston, that activates a, a single piston in the rear. So you get four in the front and single in the rear. Now I'm still a little bit unclear when these are actuated, is it four, two and two or one and three in the front? Because it would make sense that way as well. If you take a look, uh, whenever you have a single sided swing arm, such for example, the Yamaha GTS, where it uh, experimented with the single sided swing arm in the front wheel, kind of interesting. I had a chance to to test ride that bike. Very interesting technology. What that does is it makes it difficult to balance out the braking power because if you have a brake only on one side it will it'll tend to pull the bike that way and that's the tendency with every single sided uh, mounting of a brake so here you, you see the brake is on the left side and if i were only to activate that brake obviously it would pull the bike to the left because that side is being being braked broken more than the other side it's not equal as you would have with a, a dual piston front now uh, if you ride a sidecar like I do, Pegasus Sidecar Tours in, in San Diego, if you're downtown, let me take you in a very unique way to see the city. If you ride a sidecar, the sidecar will have that issue as well. If the sidecar has not no activating brakes that are controlled by the rider, then the sidecar keeps going, the bikes keep braking, and it wants to twist, right? Same when you give it gas, the rear wheel, the sidecar is always on the right. The, the rear wheel is, is pushing the, the motorcycle, propelling it forward, and it would tend to push the whole rig to the right. Obviously that can all be manipulated so that it, it trails straight at a certain speed. But uh, normally if you give gas right off the, off the red light when it turns green, you'll, you know, your, your sidecar is gonna wanna pull you to the right. So you're always fighting it. So it's the same type of concept. I would love for my community co to confirm with me that when you actuate, actuate the brakes on the VFR 6th gen, is it that only two on each side of the front activate or is it only three on one side and one on the other. I'm not sure, I'd like to know that. But in any case, four activate in the front and one in the rear. And then once you add the, the, the foot pedal brake, the rear brake, uh, the rest come into play as well. So two remaining in the rear and the two out front. So you have massive stopping power, no issues with the brake, just high quality stuff for a bike of this size. This is actually on the lighter side of sport touring. But, and, and you know, it, it's a spirited bike. So the other benefit of the link braking system is that it really eliminates nose dives. If you have one system actuating another, then uh, one, it you know, uh, helps alleviate uh, rider error, for example, but it also, it makes the bike kind of dip down equally uh, throughout the whole length of the motorcycle uh, better than if you just actuated the front which would make the bike dip down towards the front obviously so this way it's uh, again it's just another really really intelligent rider aid some more advanced riders that are super particular might not like the fact that it's not independently operable that's all fine and well but again this is not a track bike so you're not going to be riding it in that manner for me i i love the brakes on the vfr on the gold wing etc these are it's just a better safer system so so much for the brakes now the suspension 41 millimeter show in the front and the rear the front is cut you know uh, adjustable for preload and rebound the rear only for preload and uh, in some versions the deluxe versions the premium versions of this generation that included the abs etc you you were given a little little hand knob that you could manipulate easily this not so much which makes it less likely that you're going to be messing around with it to be honest so the suspension does everything that you require from it. It's not race ready, track ready suspension, and it's not as fine tunable as the, of course, the CBR, the Super Sport lines and all that, but uh, you don't need that. It's a regular standard uh, right side up fork, but it does what it needs to do. Uh, now there is uh, an instance where the VFR, uh, stock VFR, uh, at least mechanically stock, uh, you know, one uh, or, or, or basically 
finished on the podium and, and finished sixth at some point, just racing against track bikes and, and the, the, the Hero RR is the name of the channel that discusses the history of this of this bike. So I linked it in the description. You can you can get all that. So it's, it's a supremely well built machine, and you can you can drag your knee on this all day long if you wanted to. I mean, if if you are stiffler for good suspension, then probably on any of these bigger bikes, suspension is always working overtime, you know, and that could always be improved. But for me, what I needed to do from everyday use, commuting especially, and and you know weekend rides on, on these gorgeous hills, it, it does plenty fine. I mean, plenty fine for what I needed to do. The motorcycle itself does not come with any kind of modern day amenities like traction control, cruise control, uh, heated grips or any of that. There are certain versions that you can get the ABS uh, on the bike as well as an added option. It never really came uh, standard on the bike. And to me, that's a that's a little bit of a handicap because I, th I think every sport tour should have at least traction control, uh, ABS possibly, probably. I mean, the, the link braking system works really well. Like you can't even, even if you stomp on the rear, you really can't lock it up. It's kind of impressive. I mean, I don't know what you got to do to really, uh, you really have to like stand on the seat and stomp, but then you're risking falling over. So it's really, really good in that regard. ABS is not crucial. Of course, it serves a different purpose, but you could do without it on this bike. But I think cruise control, for example, it would be really great to have because I recently sold my Kawasaki Concourse and it had all of that and my Yamaha Super Tenere. And I just realized how much I enjoy that, especially now that I'm developing a little bit of a, uh, what is it, carpal tunnel syndrome here. So my hands start to get numb, uh, you know, highway riding straight so it's kind of nice to have those amenities now and actually heated grips i do use them even here in san diego so that would have been nice but uh to each their own i mean you can't ask for everything right so uh, it's not a it wouldn't be a do or die for me whether i should get this bike but i always keep coming back to it it's kind of interesting like i said i've, I've owned two before this one uh the second one i sold not intending not really wanting to but the money was was good and i always like kind of getting rid of them and coming back to them. And I've been looking for the white one just because the white one was really appealing to me. And then I find this one, 40,000 miles on the bike, runs like a champ and uh, clearly really well kept with the original, these are actually Jivy cases. Jivy partnered with Honda to sell these cases with the Honda logo, as you can see, Interceptor here, Honda on this one. Uh, and they're really, really nice. <laughs> I think for sport tours, luggage really is a huge selling point. So for me, it doesn't make sense to review this motorcycle without the luggage. I never take the luggage off, mainly because it's very useful. I use it and I also don't like to ride without it because in California we have lane splitting illegal. It's the only state where you can lane split. And if you have luggage off and on and on and off and on, you, you tend to confuse yourself sometimes and you know, you could kiss a car or something thinking the luggage is not on there. I mean, the luggage is not the widest part of the bike. Handlebars pretty much are, are that. A lot. Luggage and handlebars tend to be more or less at the same same width. For most, most motorcycles, even the concourse, the handlebars were a, a little bit wider. So you're, the, the, the luggage is not gonna be the problem if you're actually kissing things. But I just really, really appreciate good luggage because it makes the motorcycle that much useful for everyday life and for long-term use. Now, the reason why you can find these bikes in such good shape even after 40,000 miles you know and and they, they are not hard to find especially the red ones is because they were kind of expensive in their day they, they retailed for ten and a half thousand dollars and they were noticeably more expensive than some of the competition so the fact that these bikes are still in good shape tells you that who bought them were more serious mature riders who had the money to spend on a bike that that was maybe even overpriced for the market at the time and it's because it's a little bit heavier and, and it's not as sport performing as the super sport line. The younger riders don't tend to ride these motorcycles because there's faster, more aggressive bikes available. So these bikes attract people like me who can appreciate good engineering and utility of the, of the bags, which also tends to make you not ride it as fast, right? Because it's used for a different purpose. So uh, you, you can find these bikes on the market for really, really good good deals. I think it's still the best deal for, you know, a sport tour on the used market. Again, I've reviewed nearly every bike in that class on the used market. So please take a look at the, the playlist. So luggage, super easy to remove. 
you twist the, the key to the right and the whole thing comes off and that's what the bike looks like without the luggage you do have the the carriers here they're visible in the 1200 those were actually removed and made sleeker with just two holes here and a little 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 knob here where where the luggage feeds in but uh again this can fit a full-size helmet in there and there are straps that hold things in place and i really appreciate the design now for anybody who's familiar with jivy cases this is uh, clearly a jivy case because uh, the main thing that tends to fail inside is the little bolt that holds the straps that hold this thing from swinging open they failed on every single piece of luggage that i've ever owned on the jivy so that little bolt is red it's tiny it's probably like five millimeter i mean just super super short and it just does not tend to last very long now when i got these from the owner he had broken the key the key is also one you know not not this is also another telltale sign that it's a jivy because this is a, a clearly a, a jivy key used in all their luggage basically but the key broke here where it has obviously the the you know the waste part of the key so i had to fish that out and i actually made a video on how to do that if you have the same same problem because it's just crucial to have ideally the the key that you know turns the ignition will be the key that 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 deals with the luggage but because these are jivy cases these are not honda cases even though they were sold by honda then uh you you actually you get a separate key so i wanted the same key for all three pieces so i fished that key out and if you have the same problem take a look at that video uh it's it's quite interesting so what i don't like about them is the design that if you miss and not pay attention to the detail here you could still lock the case remove the key but this piece is not locked down. There's, there's half of it is up. It's very easy to miss. And it, what can happen is what happened to me, you hit a bump and the luggage falls off. The, you know, it didn't get destroyed. And interestingly enough, it just rolled, bounced and scratched the hell out of the thing. But so the luggage looks like it's on, but because it's not fully engaged and there's really no way to know uh, if, you, if you really don't pay attention, it can, it can come off. So that, that was kind of tragic, but uh, I was amazed how, how uh, the integrity of the luggage still uh, wasn't you know in, in place even after tumbling you know at 40 miles an hour so that's one thing i dislike about it but even in the newer the 1200 version this luggage was made smaller by here uh, to accommodate the leg of the passenger and in the bottom for an exhaust system that's no longer underneath underneath the seat so what that may, means is that it makes the luggage smaller and kind of defeats the whole purpose you know I like to be able to put my helmet on the side chaps on the side or, or lunch on the other one and then my my long back protector and my my leathers and anything else on the top case which fits perfectly so it's just so useful the top case itself uh, just great the the clear coat has started to kind of uh, crack and I don't like the whole red reflector here it just reminds me of the scooters and the Vespas and all that and I don't know what the deal is with this guy these little this this side of it it's kind of un, not not very attractive compared to the 1200 which really is attractive side case and it tends to kind of bounce a lot it tends to tends to jiggle a little too much for my preference uh, it, it's it's on there solid I have no no qualms about its integrity but it does tend to jiggle a little bit this one also comes with a backrest for the passenger but i don't carry a passenger because i have the seat cowl which really does a lot to bring that color scheme up a little bit because this all is one seat the seat uh, this one is actually an upgraded seat corbin makes some and this is a sergeant seat and i gotta say i love that sergeant seat it looks good uh, it's actually very slippery no matter what you put on there it tends to kind of uh slide right off so it, it just nothing wants to stay there it's it's kind of uh that's a good thing that's a bad thing well you know if you ride aggressively you want a slippery seat but uh it's super comfortable very wide very comfortable and uh, I, I didn't have any issues with my stock seat I, I, again I, I rode it from michigan to california uh, over a period of two weeks just enjoying it you know there's days that i hit 620 miles on that bike and it was comfortable it wasn't bad so but uh, this one is noticeably better in that regard the grab rails are super super sturdy uh, they're they're they seem like full full metal i mean i'm sure they're actually hollow obviously but they seem very sturdy unlike for example on the sprint st triumph i had a lot of issues with the the build quality of that bike and you can see the plastic carriers and you see the little webbing and weaving and i didn't enjoy that at all and actually my subframe on that bike the this part uh, forces 
or, or, uh, or pushes on the subframe, that part broke off on that motorcycle. And it was really, really frustrating because what that means, you have to take the whole subframe off. You have to unbolt everything and disconnect all the cables and the wiring for, for that to be welded. It's incredible. It's, it's, and of course, you know, aluminum and other, other materials are more difficult to fix in that regard. So uh, I, I really, I wouldn't buy that bike again because of those experiences of, of build quality. With the Honda, you actually have really, really solid grab, uh, grab rails. And even when you are putting the side stand uh, on, you have, you have uh, good handles here to, to utilize for that purpose. Uh, you do get a 5.8 eight gallon 22 liter gas tank now uh, th that gives you around 200 miles you know at around 40 miles a gallon let's say depending how you ride how much you use the VTEC but uh, uh, you know if you ride conservatively uh, 200 miles is where you can get with this bike and that was another factor that was uh, what should we say that was uh, made worse in the next generation in the 1200 the tank was reduced so you have you know maximum distance of 150 that's the range 150 miles which isn't enough for a sport touring bike i don't want to be stopping all the time i think this one is also a little small i wish i didn't have to stop every you know two three days to, to when i'm if this is a commuter bike i got 65 or so miles every day and i have to basically have to stop every 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 after every second day going to the office and back up to stop and fill up but uh, with this uh, Marseille tank bag that I really love, it's, it's you know, the tank is not scratched. Uh, it is a metal tank, so if you prefer uh, magnetic tank bags, you can. But I, I just like not touching the tank because every time you take that tank bag, you put it somewhere, it attracts little, little pieces of dust and dirt and sand and that have metallic properties. And, and you put it on next time, you take it off and scratch the hell out of the tank. So I prefer this this kind of a, a setup. Uh, I also have a ram mount on this this one here, including a, a charger uh, uh, coming from the stem. This is an MRA uh, aftermarket windscreen with a little spoiler that is adjustable. And I love it because I don't even have to be in full tuck for, for me not to hear any wind at all. I can actually hear myself talk, you know, and I like that a lot. So it's, it's a really great and great looking windscreen the other ones that are touring that don't have the little spoiler tend to come up uh, a little little too high for my taste and and i just like this look much much better other than that and a and basically a, a cramp buster the the bike is stock and and that's a good thing because i don't feel the need to change anything on this motorcycle uh, another reason why i think this is one of the best daily commuters is uh, for example LAX airport and another one in Southern California the John Wayne airport uh, have free motorcycle parking so I need to go somewhere uh, actually I went to Portland yeah, not, not that long ago to visit the uh, Moscow Moto headquarters and interview them if you're interested in their newest products take a look at that interview and I flew out to Portland parked my bike at uh, Orange County Airport uh, unloaded everything I had for myself, you know, all the leathers, took my, my, my luggage for the day trip and uh, had a cover and all that and lock, all, all that fit in the luggage, put it there and I was back the next day. The bike was waiting for me, uh, just in and out, you know, no messing around and I, I really appreciate that. So it's a really great bike for, for everyday groceries, uh, any kind of thing that you need a little extra space for and once you have them, it's hard not to have them again. To be very, you get very used to it. Southern California, it's hot now. In the mornings, it's cold. You're constantly changing. I have a change of clothes. I go to the gym, to rock climbing. I have my stuff there. I don't have to go home, get a car, get, get, get the stuff, get the gear. I have everything on the bike. And I, I, I appreciate that because it also looks incredible, you know? With the Sport Tour, you get a center stand useful for loading the bike with luggage so that it's flat. Um, if you're really picky about gas, useful for filling it with gas so that it's flat, that kind of thing. Obviously maintaining the rear wheel, the front wheel uh, with uh, something that props it up along with this. Um, so yeah, it's, it's useful to, 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 have, to have the center stand. I mean, you're not gonna use it all the time, but when you're lubing the chain, you know, it's, it's useful to have so you're not messing around. 
The dash is very simple. You have a digital dash information on each side. On the left side there is the speedometer. In the middle is an analog uh, tack. And on the right side you get the information such as uh, mileage, uh, two trip meters, and uh, time and gas. So you do get uh, gas gauge as well so you know where you're going. Uh, brakes of course are hydraulic on this motorcycle and it's another great thing to love about the bike and you do actually get a what is this a basically uh, an emergency flashers as well I like that you don't get unfortunately passing lights which I think should be standard on every sport touring bike they're just so quick and so easy to manipulate when you are trying to pass a vehicle it's it's very, very, very necessary, I think, especially in states like California where you have lane splitting available. If you're interested in lane splitting, I did a two-part video about lane splitting. It's really beneficial and counterintuitively, it's much safer for riders as well. Now, the only thing I did to this bike is add the red uh, tape around the wheels. I think that brings a little bit of that red down. And um, if you're interested in how to do that, because it's simple, but a little more complicated than it probably seems. And if you screw up, it's really difficult to, to make a correction and any mistake is very, very visible. I also made a video about that as well, how to make that happen. I have a, a half-fared Suzuki SV1000S in red, and it's just gorgeous. And because it's got that mix of a body black and beautiful fairing red, I think the red around the wheels really does a lot to bring that color down, including on this bike, because you do have these little red details that uh, are really accented by a little detail like the red tape on the on the wheel. I wish that the tape was a little darker though so that it could match the burgundy of the logo. And you'll notice the bike came in two different grays or silvers basically, a darker, a lighter. It came in a, a darker blue, it came in two different reds, one red, one burgundy. It came in this white and the anniversary edition 2000 I believe 6 model came with the again tricolore, the, the beautiful Honda dark blue, uh, red, and white uh, across the whole bike. And it, it's, a, it's an attractive bike and there's a little emblem that says that it's an anniversary edition. So if you find that, that keep that, that's also gonna be worth some money. And of course the black, the black was uh, on the market as well. And uh, you'll sometimes notice them with uh, golden wheels. Those were for the very last year model of the VFR. Sometimes these wheels were, uh, are painted or taken from another generation. As I mentioned in my previous uh, 2003 model, I had a seven spoke rear wheel that was taken from the third generation, so 1990s uh, VFR that had the seven spoke uh, white wheel. I, I don't believe the second generation was sold in the US uh, for various reasons, mainly for emissions and for tariffs that were uh, incorporated by, I believe it was Reagan at the time, to help domestic sales, basically Harley-Davidson sales. So there was tariffs imported uh, on imports of uh, 700 and up CC 750s. So I believe uh, there was an issue with, with that, that among other factors that made the second generation not see sales in the United States. Thank you for watching. I hope this review has been helpful and informative. If you're looking for a bike in this class with the single-sided swing arm and the matching luggage, take a look at my playlist. I've reviewed nearly every bike in that class in the used market. And I love the class. It's my favorite class of motorcycles. So yeah, if you found this review helpful, please like, subscribe, share, all that stuff that helps channels like this one, uh, independent channels, and we strive to remain that way to grow. So thank you very much. Participate in the conversation because I learned so much from you. That's the reason why I do these videos. They're time consuming. They take a lot of effort, uh, but uh, I enjoy I enjoy sharing this knowledge and, and learning from you, primarily learning. This is an educational endeavor for me, so thank you for educating me in a polite, respectful manner. So, uh, yeah, till next time, stay tuned for a review of the Kawasaki Concourse 1400. Same, same principle, Sport Tour and my Yamaha Super Tenere ES. Amazing bike. Till then, ride safe and Nick, I'm out. <laughs>